Amen. 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 Well, it's yourself. All right. In the world today, we are more of a people that it's about me and my needs. Amen. We're about, we're about, let me take care of what is mine and forget about what is yours. All right. Let me make sure that all my bases is covered mm. and I don't worry about yours. All mm. right. Yes, Lord. This text here, Paul was letting us know that it's going to take some kind of sacrifice. Yes, it right. is. But while we're talking yeah. about that this world is about not sacrificing, let's see what the criteria is for a sacrifice. Right. Are you with me? Yeah. Can we take a journey here on this text? Yes, right. we the did. journey here on this text. Yes, we, you, we, we jump off into the text, and Paul says, I urge you. <coughs> but see, you got to understand what Paul was talking about when he's urging his brother. Right. What he was talking to about, he was urging his brother, <coughs> is how magnificent God is. Amen. How great is God and his mercy. God is able to forgive you for all you have done. Paul right. was letting him know here. He's painting the picture. And in that picture, he's painting. He wanna let each and every one of us know that God is magnificent. All right. right. Can nobody stand up to a holy God? All right. He said, I urge you, brethren. I will let you know. Ooh, help me, Holy Ghost. I'm all right. Right. One second, one second. I gotta come back down. I'm, I'm so excited, but Heavenly oh, Father, forgive me. I'm here to bow eyes closed. Amen. My dear Father, we thank you, we love you, we praise you, Father. Yes, Father, Lord. asking that you would hide me behind this sacred desk, Father, yes, that the true preacher may go forth, Father. Father, I thank you, Father, for what you've done for me, what you will do, and what you're doing through me, Father. Yes, Father, I come to you as an empty vessel, All Father, right, asking right. that you would fill me up with your spirit, Father, you. that what comes out of my mouth it's your word, Father. Yes. Your holy word, Father. Yes. Father, let me regurgitate that yes. which you've given to me, Father. Yes, I surrender it all to your authority, Father. Yes, Lord. It's in all your mighty you, son, Lord. Jesus' in name. Jesus name. Amen. 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 Paul says, I urge you. I am going to give you an option. I am want to persuade you to understand who is God. All right. I'm giving you the opportunity to understand what God is and what is his magnification is. Amen. I want you to see this picture of God. Paul says, I urge you. I want you to understand that he is unfathomable. Is that word correct, Pastor? It is unfathomable. It is a word that means that you cannot use your human wisdom to understand how God is. Amen. He said, I urge you. I urge you. Not only that, he says that I urge you, he says that, therefore, after all what I said, after all what I have described how good God is to you, yes. therefore, after this, you need to make a decision. All right. Yes. If you know how God has been good to you and brought you out of your situation step by step, then you ought to know that it is an easy decision to follow God. All yes, right. Oh, yes, it is. It all should right. be. Thank you, Mama. It should be an easy decision. Yes. I have persuaded you. I have tried to persuade you. I have pushed it to you. I have laid the facts out there. And I need you to understand. Therefore, what is your answer? Amen. Mm, he says that. He says, I urge you. Therefore, brother. Now, when we talk about the criteria, we talked about the criteria of sacrifice. But the first criteria of sacrifice, you've got to be part of the household of faith. All right. right. In order for you to be able to really sacrifice the way God wants each and every one of us to sacrifice, we must be in the household of faith. So how do you be in the household of faith? The first of all, you've got to understand who is, who is the God that we serve. Right. You've got to understand that it is through Jesus Christ that brought us through the right relationship with the Father. Then you got to realize that because he has brought us into the right relation to the Father, therefore we are king. Therefore we are related. Therefore then we are able to access the power of God. Amen. 
Amen. Oh, yes, we are. <coughs> to access, he said, brethren, we got to understand that our relationship with one another, it, it, it should be closer than any brother should be. Because this relationship is that we are tied to the Father, which is in him. Amen. Oh, yes, we are. Brotherman, he says. He said, therefore, brother. So now that you are part of this relationship, and now that you are part of, of this relationship and understand what's going on, that, that you are in the fellowship of God. Amen. Mm -hmm. He says, I urge you, therefore, brother. Not only that I urge you and I, I persuade you and I show you directions to where you need to go, but he says that it is by the mercies of God. Now you got to understand what that word mercy means. That word mercy simply means simply means an act of kindness or compassion. But not just mere act of kindness or compassion. It's act of kindness upon, based upon somebody being an offender. It's an act of kindness based upon somebody who did something wrong. Is that all right? Amen. It's an act of kindness saying that, okay, I will let you slide for the offense that you have caused. All right. Mm. By the mercies, he says here, he says that, by the mercies of God. Now that tells me that because we are sinners, Saved by grace. If it had not been for the mercy of God, we would not have the proper relationship with God. Now, I understand that if it wasn't for God's mercy, if it wasn't for God's mercy, where would we have been? Right. If it wasn't for God's mercy and grace, where would we be in the text coming and saying that we are to be a sacrifice to God? Amen. God has given us his ultimate sacrifice. Right. We have offended a holy God. All right. We have came short of his glory over and over and over again. All but right. because of his mercy, yes. Yes, Lord. his mercy that kept us, his yes. mercy that redeemed us, because yes. of his mercy, All not right. our mercy, not our mercy upon one of, not one of each other, All but right. unto God's mercy. Amen. Paul Amen. is saying that, that, that we as fellowship, we we, he says, I persuade you, you're in the right relationship, but we realize that it is God's mercy yes, it is. is why you at now, yes, or why you here now. Amen. It's God's mercy that kept you from doing the things that you thought you would have done by any other means. It was God's mercy that kept you from falling into that seat hole. It was God's mercy who kept you from deserving the penalty of Yeah. You presented a 
the body of a cow, of a dove. You you present in the body of, of some kind of living animal. Yes. I, I don't know if I'm getting ahead of myself, but I'm getting so excited. It says that it says that present your body. Not only to present your bodies, but he says you you gonna take this body, present it, but it's a living. Present your body living. Now, I did some study on this last night, Pastor. But you know what living is? Amen. I, it was so funny when I read it and I ran across the dictionary term of it. It's it just uh, real simple. Living means not dead. Right? It was so simple. So simple and sweet. Living is not dead. It's just the opposite of it. It says present your body living. Amen. We as Christians need to present our bodies as living and not dead. Amen. Yeah. The problem with a lot of us Christians is that we are dead. Nah. Dead in our circumstances, yeah. dead in our trials, yeah. dead in our tribulation, dead in our worship, dead in our service. We are dead to what God wants us to do. Amen. Paul here says that we need to present our bodies living. Amen. That means that what let me see what another definition for living says. It says currently active. All right. Currently active or being used. All right. Amen. So we're supposed to present our bodies currently active or being used. Amen. I mean y'all ain't happy. All right. We yeah. present yeah. our bodies currently active and living. For what? For God. Amen. For God. Amen. God wants a living sacrifice. Yes. Yes. He don't want a dead sacrifice. A lot of us are giving God dead yes. sacrifice. Yes. Yes. We give yes. God sac dead sacrifice when we have we want to study. When we have we want to read God's word. When we come in any and every way to God, we're giving God a dead sacrifice. Amen. Amen. God says that He wants a living sacrifice. My, my, my. Living sacrifice. Currently active. How's our activity? How's our activity? Are, are, are we active or are we living dead? Mm. Currently active. And it says that being used. Are we being used by God? Yes, Lord. What? Use being used by God. Meaning that if you're being used, you are not in control, but the one that is in control of you. Are you being used? Amen. Amen. Not by you, by man, but I'm talking about God. Amen. Because we can't stand being used by man. Mm. We can't stand but man put his hands on us <laughs> and, 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 and think he's using us. But Paul here is saying that we need to be used by God. Amen. 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 Being living. Not only that, that we're being living, but it says here that being living and holy. Uh-oh. Mm -hmm. Amen. Uh-oh. Mm -hmm. Now that we're being used, now that we're being active, he's saying that we need to be holy. All right. All right. He said that Paul said, not only because you can be living and you can be active, but are you being active and <laughs> holy? Oh, yeah. right. Yeah. I mean, y'all ain't happy right. That's a good one. Yeah. Right. Then are you being active and right. holy? Right there with you, Pastor. Thank you. Uh, it's not only that it says being holy, but it says that. What holy means is devoted entirely to. Yeah. Now, now that's, that's what the Western Dictionary says. But you got to add something that to that, to that, to. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. You got to add something to that, too. And that, too, is to be, let me read the text. I, let me read it, what it says in this skin set. It says devoted entirely to God. That's right. right. Y'all ain't happy. All right. When you are being holy, you need to be devoted wholly, entirely to God. Amen. This is what he's saying. He's saying not only that you're supposed to be not dead, but currently active and being used, but you got to be, you got to be devoted entirely to God. Amen. I mean, that's a lot of words in right. two, the three little words. Entirely devoted. How is that devotion to God? How is our devotion to God? Is it slowful? Is it slackful? Is it, is it one day we on, one day we off? Is it inconsistent? How is our devotion to God? Amen. Consistent. It's got to be consistent. It says that he says that we have to be devoted and 
entirely to God. And so, so in light of his mercy, knowing that we are living sacrifices, holy means devoted entirely to God, we need to have our situation with God in order. Is that all right? It's saying that we need to have our situation in order with God. And then not only that, he says that, it says in the text, it says, holy sacrifice. Now, he's telling us that we need to be a living, a devoted sacrifice unto God. Amen. We have to have our life into the fact that we are being constantly used by God. All right. Now, let, let me see what sacrifice means. Sacrifice says, it says it's an act of giving up of your life. Mm -hmm. Sacrifice is an act of giving up of your life. So God is required for us, with his mercy, required of us to be a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable. Holy, which means devoted to God, and a sacrifice is giving up our lives. Amen. Giving up our lives. Are we willing to give up of what we want All right. for God? Are we willing to give up our comfort for God? <laughs> he, he, he's getting ready to talk about service here. He's talking about, are you willing to come out of your comfort zone for God? Right. A living sacrifice. I use this illustration all the time. A living sacrifice is a sacrifice that's willing, that is able, and, 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 and have the ability to get up once it's been sacrificed. Hmm. See, a sacrifice back then, if you stab it or kill it and offer it up to God, that sacrifice is done. That sacrifice is over. All right. It won't come back. You can't reuse it. You can't do nothing with that dead sacrifice. Amen. But what God is saying, Paul is saying, that you are a living sacrifice. So once you've been sacrificed today, get ready to be sacrificed tomorrow. Get ready to be sacrificed the next day. Get ready to be sacrificed the day after that. And continue to be sacrificed. Amen. But the problem with a living sacrifice is that it can get up. Amen. And see, the problem with a lot of us, we want to get up when God is requiring us to be sacrificed. Amen. One of us wants to get up. I did a sacrifice yesterday. I don't think I want to be sacrificed today. All right. <laughs> but God is requiring us to be All living right. sacrifice. Right. What does that living mean? That means All that right. means we currently active. Right. Not dead. Right. Thank you, Pastor. This currently active sacrifice, meaning right. that we should be able to take it. When God says, let's sacrifice yourself. Amen. All right. We should be able to be right. willing participants of the daily sacrifices that God requires of us. Amen. Amen. Oh, he says a living sacrifice. All right. Living sacrifice. That means that, that being that living, that we should be able to be required to, to die to ourselves daily, as the word says. Amen. In order for us to give God glory. Let's see what else he said. Amen. It says not only that you are a living sacrifice, holy, and a sacrifice, but let's see what else is that text tells us. It says acceptable. Amen. See, a lot of us are sacrificing ourselves, but it's not acceptable. Right. 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 You better tell right. that now. We are sacrificing ourselves, it ain't to God. but it's not pleasing to God. That's the problem. It is not to the point to what God get the glory out of our lives. Yeah. Oh, we coming because we want to come just to let everybody know we are sacrificing. Yeah. But this is the ultimate yeah. sacrifice yeah. that God yeah. knows yeah. that yeah. is acceptable yeah. to Him. The problem is a lot of us want to give God any and everything. Come on, yeah. Come on, we want to give God any and everything. We want to give him half our best. All right. Yeah. See, acceptable yeah. means, let's see what I wrote down for a second. It says acceptable means worthy of being accepted. Amen. Amen. So that means Amen. that are we giving our best so God can say, I will accept it? Are we just throwing it out there because we want to look like we are Sacrificing. All right. Unto God. All right. Oh, that's a difference. Yes, God. That's a difference. Amen. He said, Paul said here that it's acceptable unto God. Amen. Can we make our sacrifices acceptable unto God? Amen. Mm. Yes, we can. Yes, we can. Where's our sacrifice? Where's Amen. our sacrifice? Amen. It's got to be set acceptable to God. Yes, sir. Not only did it have to be acceptable, 
acceptable to God. It says, to God, which is your spiritual service of worship. All right. Amen. Mm, King James says that, make your living sacrifice holy and acceptable unto God, Amen. which is your reasonable service. Yeah. Reasonable yeah. means that there is no exception other than this. Reasonable means that, hey, this is all is required, and you got to meet this standard, or you don't, you know what near what is required of you. Right. Reasonable yeah. means that it is the bad minimal that I would accept because it's reasonable. That's it. This is like what he said. He said that, he said, which is your spiritual service? Now, now, see, I had to do that study on, on spiritual as well. And spiritual means to join in the spirit. Amen. What that brought up to mind, Pastor, is that when, when uh, James was saying that you have to try the spirit by the spirit. Amen. You have to be in the spirit. See, uh, not only did your, your sacrifice have to be acceptable to God, but the only way your sacrifice would be acceptable to God is that you must be in the spirit. Right. Oh, man, that's something to get out of here about. Because then if you know that you are in the spirit, God is able to accept your, your offering. He's able to accept your sacrifice. Oh, uh, 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 it, it says that you join in the spirit. The problem with a lot of us is that we're not in the spirit. That's why our sacrifices are in vain. Some of us are not in the spirit when it comes down to giving God our offering. When it comes down to giving God our best. Because we're not in the spirit. But if we're in the spirit, God is able to accept it. Why? Because God is also spirit and truth. Amen. Oh, yes, he is. He's also spirit and truth. He eats nothing. And you can't give God a physical sacrifice no more. You can't give him a, 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 a dead lamb on, on uh, the, the lamb that you're going to sacrifice no more. He don't want that. He wants a spiritual sacrifice. Amen. Something that's going to be on the inside yeah. and not on the outside. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. mm, it's a spiritual, spiritual, spiritual sacrifice, which is your spiritual service. Then I let the vote. Sir? Set the vote. All right. Amen. He says that. Here we go. He says the spiritual service. And not only spiritual service, but he says that. What does service mean? Service means work performed by one that serves in worship. Amen. One who serves in worship. That's it. Where's our service? Where's our service when it comes to God? Is it acceptable? Is it holy? Is our servant perfect under the will of God? Amen. Is it spiritually acceptable to God? Amen. How's our service? Mm. Mm. Service is like taking your car after your car has been brand new and you rode it around for a lot and that service engine light comes on All right. in your car and, and it tells you that you need to go get service. Mm. What that word means, service for that car means that you need to take it back to get checked. You need to take it back for it to get the proper requirement it needs to run properly. Well, in our in our in our uh, spiritual arena, service means is what are we able to give to God for service? Amen. What are we able to give to God? God has called each and every one of us to a task. Yes. Where's our service? Amen. Some of our, our tasks are falling down because we're not doing the service that God has told us to do. Some of our, our tasks are, are, are down and out because we are not doing what God has required us to do. Amen. Spiritual service. Amen. Spiritual service. Not only that it's spiritual service, but here it says that jump down after we talked about the service, after we talked about the worship, our worship, spiritual worship service. But now it says in verse 2, it says that, and do not be conformed to this world. Come on now. Yeah. Amen. Conform. Yes. Conform. I thought that when you say you're being conformed to this world, you're being boxed up into the mold of this world. All right. Which that is a good definition of being conformed. But Paul here is saying to be conformed is to either obey the world mm. 
All right. Or agree with the world. All right. Now we got some problems now. Yeah, right. We got some real issues here. Mm -hmm. Not to just to be boxed up in form and shape of the world, but Paul is telling us to be not to not obey the world. Yes. All right. See, the problem with Christians is that we want to obey the world. Yes. Right. And, and, and some of us that obey the world, you, we call them worldly Christians or we call them fleshly Christians. But not only that, but look at this one here. It says that we have some Christians that want to agree with some of the things that the world is saying. Yes. All right. Yes. All right. Yes. Some of them want to agree that, that homosexuals should be married and, and all those different things like that. But, yeah. but if we mm. go by God's word, all right. it says, it says, he it, it said it straight, he says, and do not. I mean, can I say that one more time? Do not. It says, do not yeah. be conformed. Do not follow along with the word. Do not obey the word. Amen. That is a strong word. When what Paul is using here, he said, do not follow after the world. Do not be conformed to this world. Yes. Do not go in the direction that the world is going. All right. Yeah. Do not, that, that means that, that means that he is emphatic about what he's saying. Yeah. Yes, do not be conformed to this world. Amen. Yes, sir. Are we being conformed to this world? Amen. Are we being fashioned in this world? Are, are, are we doing the same thing the world is doing? Yeah. Not only are we doing the same thing the world is doing, are we agreeing yeah. what the world right. is doing? Right. Paul right. says, Paul says, do not be conformed to this world. Amen. So, it's, it's, he, he says that, he says that, be, do not be conformed to this world. But then he gives the conjunction here, but be transformed. So what he's saying here, he says, do not let the, do not agree with the world, do not follow the fashion after the world, but Amen. it says to transform, it says to change complete. Yes, sir. Amen. That means that you once walked as the world, but now you are a totally different creature mm -hmm. right. when it comes down to the world. Yes, yeah. When you have done, you have done a complete transformation. Yes, Amen. sir. When it comes to the world, that's what Paul said. He said, don't be conformed, but you need to be transformed. You need to be changed from that to this. Yeah. Yeah. You need to be transformed from the flesh to the spirit. All yeah. right. Now, we, need right. Some, we need some spiritual yeah. changes. Yes, we need some spiritual changes. And in order for us to be able to, to be able to be a good sacrifice, we need to be able to be transformed. Yeah. Yeah. We can't no longer walk after the fashion of the world, but we got to be able to show the way God is versus how the world is. Yeah. Right. Not only that, that it says that we're supposed to be able to be transformed, but be transformed. Then he says, how? By the renewing right. of your mind. That's right. <laughs> By the renewing <laughs> of your mind. It says, who's in choice right? That the Bible says the right. Yeah. All right. By the renewing, renewing of your mind. Of your yeah. mind. Okay. That word renewing means it was old, but you made new. <laughs> That's all it means. Yeah. It means it was old, but now it's made new. Amen. What he's saying here is that that old thought pattern that you had, all right. you need to make it new. All all right. Right. That old yeah. thought pattern by the renewing of your mind. Is that that old way that you used to think? You need to change the way you think. Yes. Yes. Change the way you think. Now, when I think about the way you change the way you think, it says the Bible says that let this mind be in you that is also in Christ Jesus. We got to be able to change our fleshly thoughts into spiritual thoughts. We need to be able to guard our tongue and let God edify the words that comes out of our mouth. We need to be careful on what we. we need on what we release out of our mind. Yeah. But we have been transformed by the renewing of our mind. Yeah. See, our mind is that which we need to be changed. we got to have a new thought pattern yeah. when it comes down yeah. to dealing with the world. Yeah. When you have a thought pattern that's different from the world, you will be the opposite of the world. Yeah. That's what he said. He said, don't be conformed, but be transformed. That means your mind needs to change the way you used to think. 
Well, you used to think about how you used to deal with certain people and they came your way. Right. How you used to All deal right. with the people that used to cut you up. Yeah. You didn't change that mindset. Yeah. You didn't change that mindset yeah. when that person stepped on your toe. Yeah. You changed that yeah. mindset. Yeah. Because if you went back to the old way, yeah. you'll conform to this world. Yeah. But to be transformed is when that same person that you know you would have dealt with yeah. in the world step on your foot, you yeah. changed your attitude. Yeah. Yeah. You changed your mindset. That's all right. Mm. All right. He said, be, don't, don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of the mind. Mm. Where your mindset at? Is your mindset on the things of this world? Right. Or if it's on the things of God? Yeah. The renewing of your mind. Uh -huh. The mindset. Yeah. He says here, he said, being transformed by the renewing of mind, that you may prove the will of God mm -hmm. is that which is good yes. and acceptable yes. and perfect. Yes. <laughs> let's, let's, let's see how we can break this down. That you can prove the will of God is that is good and acceptable and perfect. Right. Let's, let's, let's just deal with to prove the will. To prove the will of God. Once your mindset is changed, mm -hmm. your mindset is that you will do the will of God. Amen. Your mindset will be to the point to where you'll be able to be focusing only on giving God glory. Amen. That's the proven will of God. The will of God is that, that once you've been transformed, you are only focused on how your mindset would be, so you can be able to be, so you can be able to be acceptable Amen. to God, Amen. approving the will of God. Amen. And I like that because see what we already said what acceptable was, acceptable means worthy of being accepted by God. Amen. So once your mind has been changed, you are worthy to be accepted by God. Amen. Oh, that's good news. To be worthy of being, uh, being worthy to be accepted by God, and not only that, but being acceptable, but proven the perfect will of God. Mm -hmm. I, I bypass good. Forgive me. It, it, he says that that which is good and acceptable. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about good. Good means of high quality. Amen. <laughs> Where's our quality of service? Come on now. Do we want to give God any and any other service? Do we want to just give me any and everything? No. no. Good means that we should be able to strive to give God good quality of service out of our lives. Mm -hmm. Good quality of service when we have given God our best mm -hmm. and not accepting nothing less. Mm -hmm. I mean, y'all will get happy here yeah. because God has given us his best Amen. and nothing less. Yeah. Yes. So yes. we should be able to be yes. able yes. if we are in the spirit yes. or if our mind be renewed inside yes. our heart. Yes. That our mind been renewed, that we should be able to give God our best. Yes. Yes. Not just nothing, nothing less. Yes. Not just any and everything. Yes. But give God what is is due to him. Yes. And that is his our best. Yes. But the only way you can get to the best is that you be in the spirit. Amen. The only way you can give God your best is you be in the spirit. Mm -hmm. And he says, good, good, good. But see, you know, good, real root word of good is God. Yeah. I mean, y'all ain't happy. Right. The real root word of good is God. Amen. God is good. Come on, y'all ain't happy yet. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, preacher. Amen. Mm -hmm. High quality, giving them my best. Amen. And then it says mm -hmm. that, finally, it says that, Amen. acceptable and perfect. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Perfect means having no mistakes. No flaws. Amen. That's it. No mistakes. No flaws. The problem with giving this our bodies as living sacrifice is that we are human. We are filled with mistakes and we're filled with flaws. But when we are in the spirit, All right. our All right. sacrifice All right. in God's eyesight. All right now. It's perfect. All right. Amen. All right. All right. It's perfect because why? Because it's him that's in us. Yes. And now we are saved. All right. It is All right. him who brought us out of darkness into the marvelous light. 
We can't be perfect, but we can be when we have the Spirit of God in our lives. Amen. What I mean is, whatever God requires of service is perfect for the function that God has called us to do. Are you happy with me? No, I'm, apparently you're not happy with me. Because if you understand what he's saying, that we can be perfect and be perfect through him, because you can't do it by yourself. You need a perfect God in order for you to be perfect. In order for you to be complete in your life, you need a holy God to help you be complete. Amen. Wow, that's exciting. Amen. When you understand that God is perfect, yeah. he's given us his perfect gift, which is his son, Jesus Christ, in order for us to be perfect in his sight. Amen. That's it. Give Thank us his daughter and son, Jesus Thank Christ, you, the only perfect sacrifice. Yeah. And what Paul is saying here is because... God is magnificent because God is good, because he is so awesome. In light of the fact of all that, we need to be living sacrifices to God. Amen. And when we understand that we are living sacrifices and jumping into the spirit, that's what makes us perfect in our sacrifice. Amen. To God. Amen. Oh, that's good news. Yeah. That's good news. Great news, Pastor. The excitement of knowing. That we as Christians Amen. can be living sacrifices, Amen. holy and acceptable Amen. to God, Amen. which is our reasonable service, yeah, reasonable. which is our service of praise, yeah. our service of worship, yeah. giving it over to Him. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Having what it takes Amen. to sacrifice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All heads are bowed. Yeah. Yeah. My dear 